What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today we're going to have a different sort of video than I normally post, but you know what? I'm okay with it. I hope you're okay with it. So yeah, I love playing video games and I play a lot of video games, but there's also times when I just want to turn everything off and read a good book. And I used to read a ton of books when I was younger. A lot of books because we were poor, we couldn't afford cable, but we could always have a free library card. Well, I get married and have kids and that kind of takes the back seat. And in Christmas of 2022, I bought myself and my wife a tablet with the sole purpose of reading books on it. And we did. We surpassed our expectations and uh, that was very exciting because I didn't want the tablet to go to waste. But of course, my wife blew me out of the water. She usually reads two to three times as many books as I do throughout the year, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. It's not a challenge. So today, I just want to talk about some of the books that I read last year. And I know this is a video game channel, but I think we all kind of have something in common where we, we all like to read, whether it's a instruction manual, you know, or a little on-screen dialogue. Either way, I'm pretty sure most of my audience enjoys a good book once in a while. So I'm going to talk about some of the books, not all the books, but some of the books I read this year. I'm going to have a little Atari 2600 playing in the background because I just felt like doing that. Hope you guys enjoy. I hope this spurs you to pick up a book and read it yourself. It doesn't have to be any one of these books, but why the heck not? These are some pretty good books in my opinion. Well, most of them are a couple aren't that great. Anyway, so the first book, this is in no particular order is The Catcher in the Rye. Now, I challenged myself to read books what people consider classics. I, I read books that entertained me as well, but I really went through the book list of classic books, and I said, I'm going to start reading these books that I always thought about but never actually did. The Catcher in the Rye is a novel written by J.D. Salinger in 1945. And this book follows Holden Clawfield as he recounts a weekend, weekend shortly before Christmas the prior year. It starts out at a boarding school in Pennsylvania, which Holden has been expelled from. He visits one of his teacher, then heads to New York before finally going home to face his parents. The book was banned a lot back in the day due to underlying communist plots, use of vulgar language, and sexual references. I don't like this book at all. I'm going to be honest with you. It might be because I came from a poor background and had to work my butt off for everything I got. The main character is a whiny, wimpy, self-centered individual who probably had everything handed to him. I read it because it's considered a classic, but I can honestly say I would have slept just fine having never read this book in the first place. If you enjoy it, more power to you. Not really a fan. Next up is The Grapes of Wrath. This book was written by John Steinbeck and published in 1939. Set during the Great Depression, the story is about the Jodes, a poor family of tenant farmers driving from Oklahoma due to drought, the economy, and the bank. They set out to California with thousands of others just like them seeking employment, a little land, and a little dignity. I loved the movie starring Henry Fonda, and I love this book. Now I will be honest and say the book is very depressing, and I mean very depressing. But the love and perseverance the family shows for each other leaves a lasting mark on me. If you ever think you had it tough, read this book and you'll change your mind. Next we have Moby Dick a novel by Herman Melville written in 1851. This is the story of Captain Ahab and a whaling crew searching for a white whale to exact vengeance on from a prior engagement. Now the book highlights the lengths and depths a man will go through to get revenge, including putting himself and others in grave danger. I'd always heard about what a great book this was and was excited to finally read it. The book was 969 pages. And the first 900 pages are an absolute nightmare to get through. From whaling terms I've never heard of to Old English speaking that was practically Greek to me, I was lost. The part that frustrated me the most was that you don't even hear about Moby Dick until the very end. It was not what I was hoping for. Now, I'm kind of proud I said I read it, but it's not what I thought it would be. Next up is a book called Punk Rock Dad. This book was written by Jim Lindbergh, who is the lead singer to one of my favorite punk bands, Pennywise. He opens up about being in a punk band while trying to raise three daughters. I saw a lot of parallels between his story and my own, trying to raise three kids while balancing a job. This was a great read for me, and I will probably read it again at some point. It was also kind of personal to me, 
not in like a, a weird way, but you know, they, they're from Orange County. I grew up in, in and around the LA area. So a lot of the, the bands and the venues and the events that they talk about, I, I was able to experience it. And uh, I just, I really liked this book. It was great. It was kind of a flashback. Not only was it a flashback to my olden days in the 80s and 90s, but it was kind of a look ahead because he's a little further ahead in life with his kids than I am. But it was a great book. Next up, we have South. This is the story of Ernest Shackleton's second expedition to Antarctica. This was an amazing read. These men got stuck in the pack ice from 1914 to 1917. For almost three years, they survived on seal blubber and ice chips and each other. It was crazy to read what their bodies had endured. It made me realize that I had no idea how far I've ever actually pushed myself physically. Now, there was minimal deaths on this one. And most of the deaths were from people that just gave up. That's literally what killed them is they finally just gave up. The ones that didn't give up, they made it through. When they were finally rescued and returned to the mainland, they were told about the current situation pertaining to World War I and thought everyone was playing a joke on them. That's how isolated and cut off they had been. They had no clue the world was at war. This was a great read. Next, we have The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. This 1876 novel by Mark Twain was everything I hoped it to be. Tom Sawyer lived in Missouri with his aunt and half-brother, a typical bored and adventurous young boy. Tom gets into all sorts of trouble. The writing in this book is on point and perfectly details life during Tom's time. I was actually pretty sad when I finished this book because I had gotten so engrossed in Tom and his adventures that when I finally put it away, it kind of left a little, little sadness in me. I'm going to be honest. And of course, if you're going to read The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, why not read The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn? You can't read about Tom and not Huck. Mark Twain wrote this novel in 1884, eight years after we met Tom Sawyer. In my honest opinion, Tom Sawyer was the better of the two books. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad I read this book. It just doesn't have the magic Tom Sawyer did. This book dealt with more grown-up themes and situations, and it felt a little too outlandish for me. But I don't know. I didn't live back then. It could be spot-on, and Tom Sawyer was the make-believe and manage one. But either way, I, I enjoyed this book, but I enjoyed Tom Sawyer just that much more. Then we have The Call of the Wild. Jack London published this novel in 1903 and set it in the 1890s Klondike Gold Rush. The book is about Buck a dog kidnapped and forced into hard labor as a sled dog in Alaska. At first, Buck suffers from the environment and the abuse from other dogs. Soon, Buck decides he needs to take matters into his own paws, giggity, and make the most of it. I love this book because you get to witness Buck transform and find out what he can actually really do. Not only does he learn to enjoy being a sled dog, he embraces it and unlocks the real dog within him. This is a great book to read. Now, this next book is called The Life and Testimony of the Apostle Paul. I don't care if you're religious or not. You do you. I am religious, and I read this book because I enjoy learning about historical figures. This book talks about Paul's secular life and his travels. It has some good insight, and it was worth the time I spent reading it. If this book interests you, go for it. If you're not the religious type, I totally understand. No harm, no foul. Next up is The Man Eaters of Savo. Published in 1907 and written by John Patterson, this is a semi-autobiographical book about a pair of man-eating lions who terrorized the Kenyan railroads and the hunter who finally stopped them. If you've ever seen the movie The Ghost in the Darkness, you will understand the book, although that movie only covers about one-third of the book, and the rest is still worth reading. I would highly recommend this book. Next is The Old Man in the Sea. This was my nautically-themed year, I guess. This book is a classic, written by Ernest Hemingway in 1952. It follows an old fisherman who ventures out alone into the ocean to catch a fish. He ends up having the greatest adventure of his life. This is a very short book. I think I read it in under two hours or so, but it left a lasting impression. And you feel for the old man by the end. It's just written so well that you, I'm not going to say you feel like you experienced it with him, but you understand what he's going through which makes her a great, great book, in my opinion. The next book is The Selection. Now, before you 
laugh at me or whatever you want to do. I was dared by a friend to read this book. She told me it was a cross between The Bachelor and The Hunger Games, neither of which I care about. But I read it anyway, and honestly, it wasn't that bad. There are five books in the series, and I did end up reading the rest this year. It is one of those um, turn off your brain and enjoy it kind of books. It's kind of like a lot of Marvel movies, honestly. You just suspend disbelief and enjoy what you're doing. If you have nothing else to read, I'd recommend this book. The final book is The Silent Patient. My wife recommended this book to me, and I read it in less than a day. I normally don't go for this genre, but man, did this book reach out and ensnare me. It is a good murder mystery, and my only complaint was the ending. I just didn't like the way it ended. I thought it should have ended differently, but I'm not the writer, so who cares? Be prepared for some adult situations and language. If that doesn't bother you, I would suggest picking this one up and giving it a go. So there's 13 books that I read last year that I thought you guys might enjoy. Feel free to leave a comment about some books that I could pick up this year and read. I am open to all genres and all types. There's very few books I don't like to read. So I will try them, and if I don't like them, I'll just stop reading them. Usually, even if I don't like them, I'll finish the books. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope this gave you an opportunity to get back into reading. As always, take some time to play a game or read a book. We'll add that this week. Be good people, be good to those around you, and keep on gaming.